Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So today I wanted to go ahead and give you guys my 3.18 Righteous Fire League Start Inquisitor Guide. So before I start, just remember that Righteous Fire is a skill gem that you cannot sadly use from level 1. You get access to it at level, I think it's 16 or 18 in Act 2. And we start running Righteous Fire in our Cruel Lab with complete budget, literally no gear, just random stuff that you find off the ground. And here today I am to present you the guide for doing that. So let's go ahead and get started. So this POB, just to uh, just to show you guys some end game numbers, because I know a lot of people care, but I'm not going to stress a lot on this. Um, this character can get over 3 million boss damage. There is nothing crazy checked in my calculators here. This is set on your Awakener DPS with standard level 2020 quality gems. I'd say this budget is between 10 to 15 exalt. Um, a, a big part of the uh, the currency sink is the belt that you know does not really affect your damage, so you don't necessarily need this. And for people who are going to complain, this is a, this is too expensive for you. You don't need 3.2 million Awakener DPS to kill Awakener. You could kill him with 500k if you understand the mechanics, right? So, but we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about the league start. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump right on into it. So, um, this comes with a breakdown of skill tree leveling, starting all the way from level one. So, from level one, you can see that we jump right away and go towards our Rune Smith, and this is for running Winter Tide brand. So, if we go ahead and jump over to the skill section, you can see the main gems, uh, basically, on a breakdown. Um, so we're not going to go over everything here right now, but this has all the information you need to know about leveling up with Righteous Fire, specifically about the pre-Righteous Fire setup with Wintertide brand, uh, and then switching over to Righteous Fire. So we start off with, um, basically this one's kind of up to you, Spark, Freeze Pulse, Rolling Magma. You're just going to use a skill that feels uh, comfortable to you until you get to level 4. Uh, at level 4, I personally like playing the more lazy approach, which is basically using a Holy Flame Totem with Summon Phantasm and Combustion. Uh, and then you drop a Flame Wall in front of your Totem so that your Totem is shooting into the Flame Wall. Um, you're only going to use this till you hit level 12, though. That's when the real juice kind of kicks in. So, with that being said, let's talk about our skill tree. So we beeline immediately right towards Runesmith over here. Um, we grab the Brand Mastery for attached to a new enemy each time they activate. And you get Wintertide Brand right away at level 12, right as you enter Mr. Evil's Cavern. Um, from here, we're going to go ahead and jump into the next part. Make sure you grab Rune Binder and your Mastery Node. From here, you can notice I took two Masteries. So we have the Vitality Mana Reservation Mastery and the Maximum Life. Scrolling out a little bit further, you can see we went up to grab our Acrimony for Dot Multi. Next up... Um, um, branching us out a little further. Oops, a daisy. So yeah, here's the normal lab. Normal lab, we are going to grab our sanctuary. Then we have our cruel lab here. You can see we are branching down further. We grabbed our aura cluster over here. Moving down, we have Ellie damage. You can grab Ellie mastery. One of the really nice things about this build is you get so much built in resistance between your elemental mastery, 15 Ellie res, your holy dominion. Later on, we're going to get extra Ellie res down here, and we run Purity of Elements. Um, so it makes it very good at League starting in that sense. Gearing is not really a big issue. Going down a little bit further, we have the Cruel Lab Righteous Fire Transition. So what this means is when you are respecking from Wintertide Brand to Righteous Fire after your Cruel Lab. So a big complaint a lot of people have is that this part can be a bit stressful for a lot of builds they need regret orbs ahead of time they're switching all their gear over this is very simple right so if you look here this is our normal skill tree the only thing we're respecting is nine points you get all of this just from playing through the campaign so you don't really have to worry about it you are respecting one two three four five six seven eight which is your brand mastery and then later you can respect light of divinity light of divinity by itself is still really strong so you don't really have to respect it right away and that's it. And then you come connect down here and you're officially Righteous Fire. Going down a little bit further, and remember, the big key thing about Righteous Fire is Pious Path right here. Pious Path is what gives us our massive abundance of sustain that no other class comes even remotely close to, which is what makes it so enabling for running Righteous Fire. Coming down a little further, 
Um, we've got the Merc Lab, which is when we grab our Augury. Uh, and more so, you can see me coming down over here, grabbing the Aura Cluster. Make sure you grab all of the Aura Clusters for reservation, along with the reservation located on either one, or else you will not be able to run all the Auras. Remember, you even need this little one right here. Okay, um, moving out a little further, you can see the Uber Lab, no cluster. Uh, Uber Lab is when we gain our Righteous Providence. When you get Righteous Providence, there's also a new thing you can add to the build I did not do last league. And what that is, is essentially going Elemental Overload, um, which is only for your Righteous Fire, which gives you a nice extra chunk of damage whenever you crit. And we will have crit because of Righteous Providence, which helps scale the Ignite on Fire Trap. It's not a super big deal, but it's a nice little chunk of damage for one point. Then over here, you can see the end game with the cluster where we'll talk about two things here. So the main focus of your cluster is getting Master of Fire. You don't have to run Master of Fire anymore. Master of Fire is purely for clear speed. If you want exposure, AKA damage, you can get Master of Fire, or sorry, you can get exposure on your gloves with the uh, Eldritch Currency. That would be Searing Exarch. Remember, even if you get like 3% exposure or 4%, the lowest possible, you're gonna use this Ellie Mastery after you get exposure, switch it from Elemental Mastery with 15 all res to exposure inflicts minimum of 18. So if you roll your gloves and get 5% exposure, this turns it to 18, which makes it so strong. Okay, um, for people who don't have a cluster, remember you can always just path up here instead and grab yourself like Cruel Preparation and Breath of Flames. A very, very, very big question I get is about Divine Shield. People ask, why do you not use Divine Shield? Why use Divine Shield? Some variants use it, some variants do not. In my personal opinion, if you are playing Righteous Fire correctly um, and you have an abundance of Energy Shield sustained, Divine Shield doesn't really do much for you. If your ES hits zero, it'll typically go back to full much quicker than your life because of the difference in the values. And if your life hits zero, you die. The only time I find Divine Shield to be good is if you have really bad sustain or you're doing things like Simulacrum where all the mobs are constantly hitting you due to their insane mitigation, or you are an Aegis Aurora setup. But this is to talk about League Start, so we're not talking about Aegis Aurora whatsoever. All right, also in the end, it's just one point. So, you know, you can always just try it for yourself. Moving on a little bit further, let's go ahead and jump into the gear. So, let me just click in here. This build hits uh, over 3 million boss damage. This is 3 million boss damage on around 10 to 15 Exalt. Um, I don't remember if I said this or not. I may have said this at the beginning. Uh, a big chunk of the currency is going towards your Replica Soul Tether, which does not really influence your damage at all necessarily. It's just a big survivability layer. And remember that you can do majority of content with much lower damage than this, right? And on top of it being much lower, this is also, again, the Awakener damage. So if you were to, like, say, uncheck Awakener and do it against, like, a normal map boss, that's a lot more damage, right? That's much more. And even if you had half this damage, less than half this damage, your clear should still feel fantastic, right? You should be able to farm your own currency to be able to progress. It's not really a problem. Let's talk about the gear a little bit. So starting with the League Start, um, we've got Spell Damage, Cast Speed Wands. Very simple. You don't have to dual wield. You could get this on a shield as well. It's just an example of what you're going for. Spell damage works for your Wintertide brand. Cast speed helps as well. It also makes it feel a little bit better. Let me also just remove this. Going on to the 12 to 55, we're getting a little bit more gear. So here you can see we just have basically the same thing. Um, you can also do a recipe to acquire a spell damage wand. It's very similar to the physical recipe. I'm not going to cover it right now, um, but basically it has to do with selling a rare energy shield base belt uh, with, I think, an, a whetstone, and then your wand, and then you can just craft the cast speed. Okay, um, helmet, standard, life, res, if you can find it. You know, you're pretty much going for life res across the board. Uh, life regen anywhere you can get it. You don't need any life regen to get this build set up, but any life regen you get greatly helps your build. Does that make sense? Um, scrolling down, just, you know, very basic gear. I'm not going to go through all of the gear necessarily. I just want to show you guys that it is all pretty, very much manageable. Um, here's a weapon for when we actually go Righteous Fire. You can see it's just an LE damage weapon with 
fire damage crafted on it nothing really that difficult ideally you would want a higher elemental damage base but just showing you you can get by with very basic gear uh moving across this is a, a variant of like a more offensive shield uh, remember that you can get le damage on armor es shields you can get pure fire damage on pure energy shields and then if you want to be more tanky you can go with armor base shields Remember that there's also two different forms of life regen. You have increased and flat. You want a mixture of both, but typically you want to take the higher value. This moves us over to our next topic, our favorite rings that are always one chaos. You've got Pyre Ring that you can use all throughout the game because of its massive burn damage. And you've got Death's Rush that you can use pretty much all throughout the game because of the armor, chaos res, double chaos res, uh, and permanent onslaught. If you don't care about clearing maps quickly, you don't have to use the Death's Rush. Uh, and then over here, we've got just a, a really shitty leather belt. Um, going across with the flasks, uh, I'm not going to talk too much about this because I'm going to plug something later that's going to explain everything I can possibly explain. But the basic TLDR is you want to craft gain charges when you are hit. You want to make sure you're running a granite. You want to make sure you're running a ruby. The rest is pretty much up to you. Then going through the higher higher gearing, we're just going to go right to the end game. This scepter, you can craft a better scepter deterministically for under three exalt. Uh, I have a guide for this that I'll be talking about a little bit later. Um, you can just simply use any form of weapon you find with high sources of fire multi or increase. You can also go with a plus one gem. Your shield, uh, same thing as explained before, uh, but this time you're looking for something a little bit stronger with maybe like a maximum fire resist roll. Uh, there's also another really good shield you can use called On's Heritage. On's Heritage gives you two max res with very high life. You just need to make sure you're not using Enduring Cry for endurance charges. So I recommend switching to Infernal Cry for that reason. You also have things like Rise of the Phoenix for one chaos you can use. Going over the helmet, helmet is where uh, a currency sync will occur. So you are going to roll your helmet with Essence of Horror. And you don't need this for early game. This is more for much further in the game. You have a one in eight chance of hitting conk effect or burn damage um so i can't tell you how much that's going to be on average but i can tell you that you can farm your own essences it's not that difficult you just have to map and that's really about it this is a very big part about scaling your single target your fire trap will now go in your helmet and essentially everything you get is like a multiplier so if you think about if you think about it level 18 burn damage is like an extra link right so if you only have four sockets in your helmet you have burn damage that's now a five link you get 30 percent more le that's a six link and then you can craft plus one gem that's like a six and a half link right even if you were just to use a helmet with essence of horror with no burn damage you would still have pretty high damage and you will be okay for majority of content this is just a little bit further right your body armor is 100 deterministically craftable you can go with Emperor of Purity, which is usually between 3C per card at League Start. That gives you a guaranteed 6 link. And then you just craft with an Essence for guaranteed life. It's called Essence of Greed. Then you just craft the Life as ES, which is unveiled through Betrayal. If you're having issues finding this craft, many people in my Discord and on my stream will be more than happy to help craft for you. Going over your gloves, um, your gloves are basically going to be somewhere, something around like life life regen or life regen chaos resistance basically to fill in the void of stats that you're missing um one important note is you want to put the searing exarch influence on your gloves to get the uh to get the exposure it's a very big damage increase your boots are going to drop from maven they're going to be very expensive the first few days if you're slower to progress by the time you get to maps they might just be one to two chaos this is not a meme these are literally one of the most common drops in the game from maven it's just at the beginning, day one, two, three, four of the league, they might be expensive. Once you put these boots on, they're literally best in slot. You will never take them off. Ashes of the Star is an amulet that is deterministically acquirable via one of the endgame encounters, also known as Squidward. Um, this is for the endgame. You don't need this for any form of progression. This, along with the Charisma Anoint, allows you to get Ashes of the Stars. Again, for people who are saying like, oh, that's a golden oil though, you don't need this to progress through the game. This is for min-maxing your build to be able to take on some of the hardest encounters. Other than that, we've got the replica soul tether that we talked about and some pretty simplified rings. We've got a ring here with basically life, dex, chaos res, 
and I crafted Minimum Frenzy, which you can unveil through Betrayal, and then an Opal Ring showing an example of using an Essence of Delirium to get Dot Multi, and then it just has Life and a Resist, and I crafted Increased Damage. So, from here on out, uh, not here on out, sorry. From here, I want to go ahead and show you guys some actual gameplay. So, thanks for hanging around. Let's start. Okay, so right on. I'm level 14 on this character. Complete budget gear. Do you not have a pair of boots? I don't have a pair of boots either, right? Simulate a league start experience. Literally nothing, right? So let's go ahead and kind of run down the Wintertide gameplay. So for Wintertide, you're going to cast your Wintertide brand. It is going to bounce around by itself. And the number one thing you need to pay attention to when you're doing single target, you just want to pay attention to these. You want to make sure all three bubbles are filled when you are fighting a boss because and then ideally you would want the bubbles on the boss, right? Because of the brand node we took at the beginning that I showed, every time you cast it, not every time, but when you cast it, it will bounce around. If you see how the bounce is kind of working, that makes it a very nice skill to clear with. And then we just use our frost bomb in between to kind of like keep the res down. And that's it. And that's pretty much your gameplay to level 55. From there, uh, at around 55, when you do your Cruel Lab, you're going to be getting ready to go Righteous Fire. So here's a character, very budget. You know, I, I just made this character. So we are running Elemental Focus, Control Destruction, Fire Trap with Life Tap. And then I've got Burn Damage, Elemental Focus, Ink AoE, and Righteous Fire. I'm a little higher level than I would normally be, so I took out four skill points. Let me go ahead and run through my favorite zone, also the zone that most people hate. Um, this is Act 8. So we are running right on into the sewers. From here, we're going to turn on Righteous Fire. And as promised, we are already sustaining it, even with 76 uh, fire res. We're also even sustaining our energy shield. This character only has 600 life regen. So let's get started. One of the big additions that I did this league that I noticed a lot of people were not necessarily following is I integrated a curse on hit to our... Frost blink. This makes it so when you come across tanky mobs, instead of having to throw a fire trap, you can simply frost blink to ramp up your damage. So take a look at this blue pack. See how long it takes me to kill that? Watch this. It's dead, right? So frost blink is a massive, massive clear speed increase while still being defensive because it's basically your mobility skill, but you should be fine for the most part progressing. RF is a tanky build, right? We're able to do content. I would show you my single target, but most things are going to die really, really fast. You can just imagine, I promise you, that the fire trap hits really, really, really hard um, at this stage in the game. So from here on out, let me go ahead and jump to the next character. I don't know why I keep saying from here on out. Okay, so this is a character with probably worse gear than the character I just showed you. This character doesn't even have a four link. Um, really bad gear, awful, horrendous flasks, you know probably exactly what most players are kind of going to be going with so we're going to run a tier one map this character is 67 to show you uh i'm going to go ahead and just pop up yet again you know i'll kind of hover over my gear a little bit not going to spend too much time on this i'm using a elemental focus burn damage righteous fire in koe and then i have control destruction fire trap life tap now this character is going to get absolutely annihilated because i have like the giga harbingers right now with literally no gear so if that does happen i apologize oh let's get our guard skill up there we go So you've got the basics of pretty much how we clear. Uh, remember, if you want additional clearing at this phase in the game, you can use Infernal Cry. At the moment, I have Enduring Cry on this character, but Infernal Cry is a very big damage increase. Uh, but the main part about it is it basically explodes the screen. It's a big damage increase because it offers you uh, uh, cover in Ash. And then our single target. So you can see this is our RF, and this is us when you throw a three-link fire trap with a curse. All right. Then, to go through the pinnacle of your content, this is my SSF character from my 10-day video series that I played. Um, actually, played. There you go. So it's four days old in terms of how much I played it. 
Uh, this is a character utilizing some of the gear shown, but a bit higher budget. It's got the Ashes of the Stars. It's got a Death's Rush. It has a Rise of the Phoenix, Legacy of Fury, uh, a crafted Stygian Belt, but nothing here is super unobtainable, I promise you. Um, so, with that being said, let me go jump into a Tier 16 silo map. You're going to notice that some explosions are going on. The explosions are from Legacy of Fury. This character can be a lot more aggressive with the clearing because of the... Uh, specifically because of the uh, Legacy of Fury. They help clear a lot of the uh, rare mobs as you kind of like run away because that, that little burn that they create kind of lingers around. Why is he showing Legacy gear? It's not Legacy gear, it's Legacy of Fury. That's just what it's called. It's from Maven. And then the si single target. It does a lot of damage. It's just this has a... Uh, this has a uh, phase, so I can't really do anything about it. Thought I was showing explode chest. No, you should look at my explode videos on RF if you want to see those. You step into a map, take one step, your GPU card goes. V -v 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 and then uh, you get a thousand rampage stacks. It's pretty fun. All right. And that is pretty much that. So hopefully that helps you guys out with kind of like the progression. I tried to do a bit better this go around on explaining it. Before I finish up this video, I want to go ahead and bring attention to the new Righteous Fire Wikipedia. So uh, I've went a little bit out of my way to create a literal Wikipedia that all of my Righteous Fire POBs will be on from now on, along with pretty much any question you could possibly ask. So I'm not going to spend too long on this because I'm going to make another video for this. So the League Start POB that you, you saw me show is right here that you can take. The way this works is you ask a question. So you go, hey man, I found my first Exalt in Path of Exile. What do I spend it on for Righteous Fire? So you type exalt, you look at what highlights, which would be here, you click it, you click here or search your number, and it takes you to your question or your answer, or your question that is answered right here. Furthermore, on top of this, on the right-hand side, I have, I have typed up a crafting method for almost every piece of gear, going from scepter, body armor, helmet, gloves, boots, shield, rings, amulet belt and jewels the shield one is a little bit wonky because i never really was super good at crafting a shield one more thing before i go if you open up the pob from right here you'll notice there's also a notes section the notes section is very similar to well, actually this doesn't matter we're gonna just delete this ignore that bottom part um this here is basically just like one of the main questions people ask is what is the priority order for gearing the character. So this will have everything for you. And the last one, and then I'm done, I promise, for people who wanna know about SSF, the character I just showed you everything on is my SSF character um, that you can see here. This character that I'm showing is this character right here. So if you flick over to this page, you can see a day one to day 10 progression of me doing Righteous Fire SSF, including a SSF Maven kill that you can find here with POB timestamps on every single video for the exact date. So for example, this would be the day one. You can see a day one POB. If we click like day seven, you can see a day seven video recap along with a day seven POB that you can find right here. That's pretty much about it. I hope you guys have a wonderful time in 3.18. If you guys are playing Righteous Fire, drop a comment down below. Come hang out on the stream at twitch.tv slash pox. Say hello in my Discord maybe drop a twitch prime but that's pretty much all i got so catch you guys all later hope you guys had a wonderful time hope you guys enjoyed yourselves and i'll see you guys all tomorrow take care everybody